Thank you for joining me for another Inkscape tutorial. We're going to show you uh, how to do a little bit more of advanced Christmas tree ornament. So uh, what we're going to show you is how to do something very similar to this right here. This is a very popular ornament, a uh, laser cut ornament style, where you have an outline such as a circle or a star or a rectangle with some sort of an image imposed in there in the middle and notice just like that bird there and there and there. It is attached to the outside as a kind of a silhouette, but the other bits are kind of cut out. You see that here in this example as well. So we're going to show you how to do that today. So first we're going to go ahead and uh, try to look for some sort of an image. I'm going to try a Christmas tree. We'll just use that. I'm going to right click on it and do save image as. Again, that's right click on it, save image as and um, I'm going to save it to my downloads folder. Remember the name, Christmas tree. Notice it's a JPEG. We'll talk about that in a second. And click Save. And because I'm using Chrome, this uh, is going to appear down here in this little downloads banner, which is very, very useful. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag it from here. Let's left click. Left click and hold it, drag it from there. Drop it into Inkscape right over here. What it says there, um, when you're just starting out, just click OK to the default settings. Later on, when you get really uh, good with Inkscape, you can make some decisions as to if that's helpful for you or not. Again, when you're um, doing a new project, go to File, go to Document Properties, change it to stuff that you can use, such as uh, inches or millimeters. Pixels are great when you're doing websites or you're doing some graphic stuff, but when you're actually doing some laser cutting, it's uh, helpful to stick with inches or millimeters. I'm going to change the width to something that uh, gives me a little bit of elbow ring to work around even though my finished piece is going to be around four inches by four inches. So there's my Christmas tree. Now when you download a JPEG from the internet, uh, you know a little bit about JPEGs. Look closely. They can get very, very blocky, right? And we don't want the laser, cut, uh, the laser cutter to have to do that, so I'm going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap. What this is going to do is actually make a trace of my JPEG, my blocky JPEG bitmap, and transfer it into a vector image. So you go to Trace Bitmap. Uh, don't worry about a lot of these options until you really get uh, very experienced with Inkscape and laser cutting. For right now, just stick with Brightness, Cutoff, and Threshold. When you click on your object, then click Live Preview, it should pop up here. If it does not, because of some fancy settings within Inkscape that allows you to have a lot of a wide variety of tools and options, it's kind of like a, a layers thing, where if you click over here and click Live Preview and it doesn't show over here in the little preview window, then you're not making adjustments to the image that you want. So you should probably click on it in the same spot a few times, definitely not in here in the middle, but maybe on something where there's definitely some image information until it shows over there. A little hourglass might pop up while it's thinking about it, and then it'll eventually show up. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to make a vector copy of what I want. This threshold, if I mouse over it, it says brightness cutoff for black slash white. What it's going to actually do, it's going to look at the difference between this dark color here and this light color here, and then how what I set this threshold to tells me how defined this line is going to be and how fuzzy or curve that line might be. For this particular image, 0.45 I think will be just fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Please feel free to play with that number until you get an image that you like. Uh, it goes from 0 to 1. You can uh, double click and change it that way. Let's say 0.55 or you can use these uh, arrows right here up and down. Either one's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now if I look at my image, it would be very difficult perhaps to see on some images if anything at all happened. But what it did was make a vector copy on top of, now watch, I'm going to peel it away, on top of the JPEG or bitmap that you have there. Now, let me show you what that really means. If I zoom back into my original, you see it's, it's very, very blocky. That's not going to be great for the laser cutter. But a vector image, which is what this just did, notice, no matter how far I zoom in, those edges are pin sharp and crisp and great for laser cutting. So that's what I want. And this is a good number. If I didn't like that, I would go back select my original image, adjust that threshold, and just try again. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I might have four or five copies out here of this with different threshold values, and I'll just keep the one I like and throw away the other stuff that I don't want. 
So I'm going to go ahead and close this out and get rid of my original. If, you, if you're just looking at this right here and you kind of are confused and thinking, wait a minute, which one my, is my original, which one is the copy I just made, the vector copy, just zoom in. See how nice and sharp that is and how blocky that is. This is my original. So I'm going to click on that, hit delete, and off it goes. All right, so this is the one I'm going to work with. <clears throat> now to do that, I'm going to go ahead and make my uh, ornament form. I'm just sticking with uh, these ovals. It, it doesn't have to be circuit or oval if you'd rather do a square or a star shape, which is um, uh, just a little bit more of a challenge. Not impossible, but a little bit more of a challenge. You're welcome to try that. You can get some fun options. Okay, so I want this to uh, be of a certain size. I'm going to set my height to no more than 4 inches and a width of, I'm just going to try 3.5. So it does have a little bit of an oval shape to it. Now, my uh, tree is obviously not going to fit in there unless I do some adjustments to it. I can click on it and choose my width and height values specifically, or I can just hold the control button, grab one of these side anchors, and shrink it down that way. I think that'll probably work all right. Again, the look that we're going for is, I'll show you again, is uh, this kind of a look here, where the uh, outline that's on the inside is attached to the uh, circular outline on the outside. So we're going to take this, control D, duplicate it. We just made a smaller one on top of it. We're going to kind of shrink that down. Now I do want to center these two. So to center them, I'm going to bring up my align and distribute menu. Remember, you go to object, align and distribute for that. Or I just use the uh, short, or the hotkeys. Shift, control A is great. I'm going to choose uh, relative to this biggest object here. There we go. That works great. Now I'm going to uh, line this up here in the middle. I, I wanted to attach it a few different points. Uh, definitely these two points here. Maybe this bottom point. Maybe the top point. Let's kind of see what's possible. Maybe just these two side points are going to be fine for now. Now that line looks pretty thick. I'm going to show you how thick it really is. Select it and go to your fill and stroke menu. Do that by just double clicking here in this area or going up to um, object and then fill and stroke right there. Either way, we'll bring up your fill and stroke menu over here. Sometimes it'll take a little while depending on your computing power. So I'm going to click on it, look at my fill, and I'm going to choose no fill, no paint, because remember the laser cutter doesn't care what color it is. Don't worry, it didn't disappear. I'm going to choose an outline stroke and then the stroke style. Uh oh, five's a good size. Now, if you pop up with something like this to where there are double lines there and you don't want those two lines, I'm going to show you how to get rid of that. The easiest way is to select the whole thing, go to path, choose break apart. What that does is it uh, breaks apart all of the image ingredients, so to speak, that are in that image. And now, did you notice? Two lines just came up. Uh, because now I can select them independently. Now, again, I may have to click on it. There we go. And I'm going to peel away that middle one and just get rid of that. If you want to keep both, uh, that's fine. It'll make it a challenge to do this outline. Alright, well, it looks like the only place I'm going to be able to really touch, unless I stretch it, which I can, yeah, that'll be fine. It's a tree, so it can have some odd shapes to it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I, I do want this to be a little lower down. Oops, not the circle. I'm going to hit Control D Z. Control Z is is your friend for anytime you make some mess ups. There we go. I think this is going to work fine. So it's touching on all four points where I want it to. So here's how we join these together. This is where uh, the layers can get uh, just a little tricky. Let me kind of show you an example of what I mean. I'm going to make a quick uh, example of this off here to the side and kind of illustrate what we're going to try to do. Now as you remember from um, this image here, we want that in our case a Christmas tree to be stuck to the outside and the inside stuff to be cut away. Now that's going to be a challenge if we're not paying attention to our layers. Let me show you what I mean. In my little example here, if I choose the star and choose my inside border and then go to, I'm going to scoot it to the side so you can see what happens, go to path. Go to path and then difference. Watch what happens. 
Well, that's exactly what we're looking for. But sometimes what'll happen, I'm gonna hit Control Z, sometimes what'll happen is not what we're looking for. Let me show you what I mean. Instead of getting it to join up like the ornaments, watch closely, I'm gonna hit Difference again. You're gonna get a different result. You're gonna get that. Now, the reason why is because um, if we're going a little too fast, we might not pay attention or be mindful of what is on top of another thing. Now, to look at it, just zooming in, it's going to be difficult for us to see. But imagine it like it's uh, three sheets of paper on top of your, your desk right now. So this sheet of paper is on the very bottom. Then the question is, between these two shapes uh, of paper, which one is on the very, very top? That's going to determine when you hit the difference between those two. Are you going to get these points or are you going to get this joined up here? That's a big question mark. So the easiest thing that I like to do is to just do this. Before I do this, this uh, object path difference thing, what I just do, watch, is I'll select my object that I want to join up with the inside part. And then I'll go up here where it says raise selection to top. And that is, that is going to adjust those layers. So watch. Uh, I'm going to take this and just, I'm going to tap it a bunch. And now when I select my star and my rectangle, then go to path and difference, I get the effect that I'm looking for. And that's exactly what we want to do here. So I'm going to click on my Christmas tree. And before I click on my oval, I'm just going to go up here to my uh, layers and raise selection to top and just make sure, I'm going to hit it a few times, that that Christmas tree is on top of this oval. and. Uh, now you'll see our difference when we go to path difference. And notice it's joined right up there at the tip and these two tips in this bottom part. Now that bottom part, that's not what I was looking for. So I'm going to do a quick control Z and just kind of scoot it or just stretch it just a little bit more. And I'm going to show you now what happens if you don't do that. So watch, I'm going to select the oval and let's say I didn't do this. Let's say for some reason I, I did the oval first or second and then I did the tree first or second and so unbeknownst to me one of them is going to be on top and the other is going to be the next layer and I, I don't really pay attention to that. Then what will happen when I do this difference thing, path difference, watch, I get these points. So again that's not what we're looking for so to avoid that just take the object that you want to join with that, make sure it's on top. So I'm going to click on that and that and hit uh, path difference that's exactly what we're looking for and we're going to go ahead and um, do a quick uh, little loop here at the top just do a couple of those and uh, line those up going object align and distribute just kind of align those two together great and now I'm going to scoot them up just a little bit and align this one I'm going to go ahead and group these together it'll make it easier if I'm moving them around and I'm going to center that to this outside oval. Oh, I did it to the very middle. That's not what I'm looking for. That's okay. I've got some options here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, this right here. There we go. And then I'll just scoot it down using my arrow keys just a little bit where there's some overlap. All right, now watch closely. I'm going to choose this and then this, and I'm going to kind of union them together. And watch what happens here. Path, union. See that? Nothing happened. And the reason why is anytime you want to join some paths, you want to do the union or difference or intersection, any of those kind of things with these paths, notice I grouped this together a little while ago. See where it says group of two objects? I group this together to just make it easier to center on this large oval. You can't group paths if any of those paths are grouped. Uh, sorry, you can't union or difference any of those paths if they're grouped. So I have to go into there, go to Object and Ungroup. Now it's not going to make a difference to the laser, but it is going to make a difference of how these two paths are managed. Now notice, um, since these aren't two grouped paths now, I choose this and this. I go to Path, Union, and there we go, not join time. Alright, there we go. Thanks for joining me for this uh, advanced tutorial.